two of the most powerful eyes in the universe turned to a single strange visitor. Hubble saw a flicker, a puzzle in the night sky. But J.W. Etsy peered into the unseen, revealing a unique chemistry, unlike any comet we've ever known. Together, they showed us a fragile time capsule from another star system, teaching us a crucial lesson for the next time something from beyond arrives. Two powerful telescopes revealed a fragile visitor from beyond, teaching a crucial lesson for the future. What do you get when two of the most powerful space telescopes, Hubble and JWST, focus on the same interstellar object? With three eye atlas, the answer wasn't what astronomers expected. Hubble gave us the first clues, but they raised more questions than answers. JWST then stepped in to measure details that even Hubble couldn't resolve. The result is a clearer, but also more puzzling, picture of this strange visitor from beyond our solar system. And by the end of this video, you'll see why researchers say this one object could reshape how we prepare for the next interstellar arrival. The puzzle Hubble revealed Hubble's first images of three. iAtlas didn't provide certainty. Instead, they revealed more complexity than anyone expected. The object was already remarkable when discovered, since it became only the third confirmed visitor from beyond our solar system. The first was Oumuamua in 2017, a body that behaved strangely and faded quickly, while the second was Comet Borisov in 2019, which displayed more typical comet activity. When Hubble turned to 3 eye Atlas, many hoped it would resemble one of those earlier cases, but the signals proved harder to interpret. Tracking it was challenging. Interstellar bodies move fast because they are not bound to our sun, cutting through space at tens of kilometers per second. Hubble could only take brief exposures before the object streaked across its detectors. Even then, the results showed an unusually faint profile that seemed to change from one passing observation to the next. Its appearance did not hold steady, as though parts of it were coming loose or breaking down while it was still being captured. Over several weeks, astronomers worked to collect more images. By comparing these across time, they noticed that the nucleus, or central body, seemed to fade much quicker than expected. In some frames, it almost disappeared against the background. In others, it returned with altered brightness, like a signal that refused to settle. A simple comet, when warmed by sunlight, usually gives off steady gas and dust. What Hubble witnessed instead looked like something flickering in and out. The experience has been compared to watching a distant airplane at night where the navigation lights blink. But you never get a complete view of the wings or fuselage. You see flashes that suggest a structure, yet you can't be sure what the full shape is. For astronomers, this made it difficult to model the object's size, its surface materials, or even how intact it still was. One reason for concern came from how interstellar objects respond to radiation pressure. This is the slight push given by sunlight across a wide surface. If 3 eye Atlas was lightweight or fragmenting, that pressure could alter its path and skew the data. Combined with the speed of its trajectory, missing details in the images could lead to false assumptions about what forces were acting on it. That uncertainty sparked debate. Different research teams looked at the same images and reached different interpretations. One hypothesis suggested a cometary nucleus breaking apart early. Another argued it may have been less dense, with properties unlike the comets we know in our own system. Still, others wondered if it fit better with a rocky asteroid. Ancient interstellar debris doesn't need to match categories built from our neighborhood, so the disagreement showed how limited direct evidence was. For comparison, telescope records of Borisov showed a comet with flowing tails of dust, while Oumuamua largely defied those expectations with no visible coma. Atlas appeared somewhere in between, but not in a way that matched either perfectly. Hubble confirmed it wasn't a simple cometary release of material. Something unusual was shaping its appearance. That set the stage for JWST, whose infrared view could explore the chemistry hidden behind those flickering signs. What JWST could see, that Hubble could not, why bring in JWST at all? Because where Hubble's vision gave astronomers a rough sense of form, JWST could search for chemical traces. It looks at infrared light, which is heat radiation invisible to the human eye. 
This part of the spectrum carries information about what substances are present. Every molecule leaves a distinct pattern, much like a barcode. By spreading the light out into a spectrum, James Webb Space Telescope can separate these barcodes and tell what gases or solids are there. The big uncertainty was whether it could even detect three eye atlas in the first place. This visitor was both faint and fast. Unlike stars or galaxies, which barely shift from night to night, Atlas raced across the sky. JWST, which normally studies very distant but relatively still objects, had to adjust its tracking rapidly to follow this small body. And because infrared light is sensitive to both heat and brightness, keeping the object centered long enough to record useful data was a serious test. The contrast with Hubble here is clear. Hubble can capture images in visible light, producing snapshots of shape and brightness. JWST works differently. Even a weak signal can reveal what elements and compounds are present if the telescope maintains focus long enough to record their spectral lines. But the faintness of Atlas meant its chemical fingerprints might also be incomplete, adding risk to the whole observation campaign. Despite those concerns, JWST succeeded. The spectra it returned showed evidence of both gas and dust, but with some puzzling results. Expected molecules common to comets, including certain carbon-bearing species, were either missing or present in much lower amounts than predicted. At the same time, other molecules, particularly involving oxygen chemistry, showed stronger signals. Taken together, these readings suggested a body whose chemical evolution differed from the comets that formed in our own solar system. Think of it this way. If Hubble's view was like seeing the outline of a shadow on a wall, JWST was more like running a scanner over the wall and recovering what ingredients produced the shadow in the first place. Instead of only measuring whether the object's brightness was changing, JWST let astronomers check what materials were responsible for whatever was escaping into space. This was striking because Borisov, the earlier interstellar comet, looked chemically ordinary. Its gases closely lined up with the chemistry of solar system comets. Atlas, however, did not. Those irregular abundances raised new questions about where it may have formed and what environment it was exposed to before reaching us. One hypothesis is that it came from a colder, more volatile region where ices accumulated differently. Another is that we caught it in a critical stage of breaking apart, meaning the molecules we saw were skewed by rapid disintegration. What we can say firmly is that James Webb Space Telescope filled critical gaps. Hubble left open. The chemistry confirmed we are not just looking at a simple icy body passing through. Something in its history or its internal makeup set it apart. But only when the two telescopes' data were placed side by side did a larger picture begin to emerge. Why this changes. Interstellar science, one telescope showed outline, the other revealed chemistry. The real importance is in how those two pieces fit together. On their own, Hubble suggested instability and flickering brightness. JWST added composition data that ruled out a simple cometary explanation. When combined, the evidence pointed away from clear categories. It was not behaving like an asteroid with a solid core. It was also not consistent with gas-rich comets streaming off in predictable ways. That left astronomers with a more difficult question. What kind of interstellar material were they actually tracking? Theories formed quickly, but split in different directions. The mainstream interpretation is that Atlas was unusually fragile and started breaking apart long before it finished passing the inner solar system. Its brightness changes and chemistry align with that hypothesis of early disintegration. An alternative view is that it came from a very different birthplace, perhaps in a cold disk around another star where its building blocks would not correspond to anything familiar here. Another suggestion is that dynamic effects like solar radiation pressure exaggerated the fading, making it appear more unstable than it truly was. In each case, the combined Hubble and JWST data acted as the boundary lines. They showed what it could not be, even if the final answer remained uncertain. This is where the science expands. Researchers are now building computer models of how incoming interstellar bodies respond when they enter our system. The sun's heat and energetic particles can drive volatile ices to boil away, crack a surface, 
or even force an object to fall apart. If the structure is already weak, as the evidence for Atlas suggests, then survival into the inner system becomes unlikely. These models are meant not only to explain Atlas, but also to prepare for what later arrivals might do. Each passing object is not just a curiosity. It tests how well our predictions hold under direct observation. Why does this matter? Visiting debris gives us natural samples from other planetary systems. We cannot yet send probes to nearby stars, but fragments travel to us. Their makeup holds information about which ice is condensed, what minerals formed, and even the radiation environment where they originated. With Atlas, Hubble, and JWST uncovered not only what ingredients it carried, but also how unstable those materials became once inside our solar system. That instability is part of the story. It helps to picture a time capsule. You open it expecting a preserved message, but the paper is already flaking away. The fragments still carry information, but it is harder to piece together. That is what astronomers experienced here. Each interstellar object so far, Oumuamua, Borisov, and now Atlas, has shown distinctive behavior. No single pattern defines them. The small number of detections already points to wide variety among star systems. The key takeaway is that Hubble and JWST together proved future visitors may refuse neat labels. Astronomers now know they need rapid coordinated observations across multiple observatories to capture fragile data before it vanishes. And that brings us to the wider significance of interstellar science itself. Conclusion. Hubble and JWST together showed that no single observatory can fully capture the story of an interstellar visitor. Each instrument filled the other's gaps, turning fragments of data into a more complete record. The consensus view is that future mysteries will need the same kind of rapid cooperation. When the next interstellar object appears, astronomers will need faster coordination, sharper tracking, and more detailed measurements than ever before. Each detection is not just a passing body, it is a rare sample from another star system. And the lesson from Atlas is clear. We must be ready to study it.